three so far. She clasped her fingers behind her head and took a deep breath. She had no idea how to help him. He had obviously snapped. There was no way that he could have really killed someone, but his attempt to try and convince her was a clear indication that something was very wrong. Rob, I need you to think as clearly as you can and tell me how you got blood on your clothes. Be honest and not dramatic, please. This is important. You're telling me, he agreed. She listened while he began. The first one you already know about. He was that thug on the news. The second one still hasn't been mentioned. At least not that I've heard. He probably hasn't been found yet. I killed him at a building that's under construction in Santa Monica, and I put his body in the dumpster and covered it with the leftover lumber and bricks that were there. That was a week ago. Trash day has to have come and gone by now, or maybe they're on a different schedule or something. The one tonight, though. You'll definitely be hearing about her. She was a big, fat whore. I got to finish, but people were coming, so I had to get out of there fast. I rolled her into the lake in Echo Park. I got a chance to use the water to clean my face, but my clothes... Well, you know. The first guy was in an alley, and the building had a spigot. That was lucky. My first time was so much cleaner. You'd think that would have been the messy one. The second one, there was no water around. I just caked the concrete dust onto the blood. I looked dirty, but not bloody. I washed up in a restroom at a 24-hour Thai restaurant. Tonight, though, tonight was a mess. That bitch had it coming to her, though. Rob, are you being completely honest with me? She was in shock. She was numb. She didn't really believe him. She had no idea what to do if he was telling the truth. He really would need professional help, after all. Yes, I am. I am the copycat killer that the news is talking about, but I am not a copycat. He was a monster. I'm just doing it to people that shouldn't be on the planet anyway. They were bad people, Sue, all of them. That's why I'm so sure that the fucker is still dead because it's me out there and because I killed him. They must have taken his body when it was unsupervised. It would be very easy for them to come through the morgue's walls and remove the evidence. Oh, Rob, Rob, this is crazy. You're crazy. You know that, don't you? You have to. She was begging him to agree. There were some preternatural elements to what was going on, but he was taking it too far. He had clearly snapped from the strain of it all. He had been pushed into a highly susceptible state, and the book had given him information that had pushed him over the edge. She was beginning to believe him. He might really have hurt some people. He had convinced himself that he was part demon and had to feed to stay alive. Rob, did you bite them? Please, Sue, try to understand. No, I'm sorry, I can't. This is too much, Rob. I don't know what really happened out there, but you can't harm people that you decide are bad. It's not up to you. The killer is dead. Please just let it end with him. You have to stop this. You are not part demon. Maybe they are real, but this lineage thing is all bullshit reasoning. You have to see that. You are causing these changes. You shaved all your hair off. Maybe you believe it so much that you're seeing more change than is really there. You are still Rob Barton. You have been through a tremendous lot. I understand you may not be able to handle all that has happened, but you have to be responsible for your mental health. Are you going to turn me in? He asked solemnly. I don't know. What would you do if you were me? I don't know, Sue. I really don't. This can't just continue like this, don't you agree? If I can prove to you that what is happening to me is real, will you give me some more time to understand it? What are you talking about? My changes are getting worse. If I show you, and you can't rationally explain it away, will you give me more time to figure this out? Rob, you do look different, but you are different on the inside, and it's affecting the outside. I can't agree to that. Actually, it's working from the outside in. It's in the book. Rob, I'm going to incinerate this fucking book if you refer to it one more time. It's filling your head with dangerous nonsense that you can't handle. I'm going to ask you again. If I show you changes beyond my mental condition's ability, will you... Oh, for Christ's sake, just show me already. Open the door. I'm sorry to be talking to you like this through the door but I just wanted to prepare you. I know you're not completely prepared. Hell, neither am I, but you have at least a basic idea of what to expect, even if you don't believe it. It's in your mind now, and it'll help you cope. I'm going to open the door. Are you ready? She was nervous. She was beginning to wonder just how dangerous he was. I'm ready, but if I don't feel convinced, then we still need to talk about what to do. Deal? Deal, he concurred. She heard the lock click and watched as the knob began to turn. The door began to slowly open. 
It was dark in there. Why are the lights off? She asked him. You know that's dangerous. I don't like the lights that bright. It's too much for me. Well, turn them on. I need to see you, don't I? He clicked on the light and blinked hard while his eyes adjusted. He was backlit by the bathroom light, standing in the doorway. He looked like plain old Rob to her. Please come and sit with me so we can talk, she said to him. No, he said softly. He held out his hand for her to take it. Trust me, please. She was more than nervous. She was starting to feel scared. Are you scared of me? He asked her. She was busted. She could barely see him, but she could tell his eyes were sad. Sue, I would never. It's still me. I need you to know that. Come here. I just want to show you. His hand was still reaching out. She took it. It felt smooth. He gently wrapped his large fingers around her hand and lightly pulled her into the bright bathroom. She was looking at his knuckles. She didn't remember his hands being so large. Look at my eyes. He leaned in close to her face. Oh my God, she said as soon as he spoke. She put her hand to her mouth. Your teeth. I know. I guess we'll start with those. This happened just tonight. They weren't like this yesterday. He opened his mouth wide and peeled back his lips to show them to her. The gums had grown about a third of the way over them. The teeth were separated and pointed and serrated. He licked them with his tongue to explore them. On my way out tonight, pieces of teeth started falling out, and it stopped when they were like this. There was no way he could have filed the teeth down that much, and so perfectly. They were like tiny shark teeth, but there was only one row of them. What's happening to you? I already prepped you for that. You know what is happening. Look at the rest of me. His dark brown eyes were a very light yellow in the iris. The whites looked almost flesh-toned. Even the pupils looked lighter. The sockets were sunken in, and they looked smaller. His brow was protruding more, and it met with the top of his nose, which also looked smaller. His thin lips were also the same color as his skin, which was very tan-looking for someone who never got any sun. He was still wearing his jeans. It was definitely blood that had dried on them. His shirt was in a wad on the floor. He had removed it to wash up. His torso was very muscular. She had seen him recently with his shirt off after the demon had attacked and injured him. It was not the same upper body at all anymore. She leaned in closer to see what was so different about it, other than the musculature. It was hairless. There wasn't any stubble. She couldn't even see any pores for any future stubble to poke its way through. Then she realized what exactly was throwing her off. It was something much more noticeable than the muscles or the skin texture. It was so obvious that somehow she had looked right past it. He had no nipples. His pectorals were large and well-formed, but there were no nipples blemishing them. He just stood there patiently while her eyes continued to examine the new him. He nodded in agreement with her at certain facial expressions she made along her discoveries. She touched his chest. It was smooth. She pressed it with her fingertips, but she made no indentation. He was rock hard. I don't believe this. It's real. Even all this part is real. I'm so sorry I didn't know. Why didn't you tell me what happened? Because you weren't ready. You weren't ready five minutes ago, let alone five days. It's okay. I understand. I didn't really know it would work this well myself. I just took a shot out of desperation, and it was a lot to go through. There's no way I would have been able to survive and kill that dead fucker otherwise. Damn it, I keep doing that. What? Cussing. I'm not supposed to cuss for two months. She furrowed her brow and smiled quizzically. Why? I promised the fates that if I survived, I would at least pay that much. Her heart ached with relief. For a few minutes there, she felt like she had lost Rob, as well as Michelle. He had gone away on some journey and had never come back. Someone else had who had looked like Rob, but was starting not to more and more. Even though he was so drastically different physically, and had killed a few people out of some twisted new need to feed, and with all that he had gone through, he was still the plain old Rob that she knew and loved. Well he said. It's incredible. Are you okay? I'm fine. Well? Well, what? Can I have more time? Oh, she said, realizing that she had completely forgotten. Yes, I need some time with this myself. This is crazy stuff, Rob, even if you are not. I know. Thank you for understanding. I don't understand. Not everything yet. I just know that you're right and we need more time with this. I'm still in this with you. We have to find a way around you killing people, though, seriously. You could get caught. He held up his hand and said, I don't even have fingerprints anymore. That's not the point. You know that, right? 
He sighed, closed his eyes, and nodded. I understand how grave the situation is. I really do. I'm just trying to deal with it the best I can. I know. If I could just pick one asshole and put them up on a meat hook in the walk-in fridge at work and feed on them every week until there was nothing left, I would, but I can't. You read it, and it's true. It has to be human flesh, and it has to be fresh every time. She shook her head slightly. There has to be another way. I thought so, too. I wish there were. But if you were going through what I am going through, you would understand that. It's like the hunger takes over, and I cannot resist it. It would destroy me, and my new survival instincts won't allow that. I can't describe how it feels. It's not justified. That's not the right word. It's more primal than that. That's it. Primal. It feels natural. I have to do it, Sue. I try to aim it at the bad people I can find. That doesn't make it okay. I know, but at least it makes it a little better than what that dead fucker was doing. I guess. I won't get caught, I promise. I'm not so much worried about that. How do you do it? I mean, do you use a weapon? I don't need a weapon. I am one. I can't get hurt. No one can hurt me. At least there's one perk for how ugly and bad I'm becoming. Oh, Rob, it's not like that. You're sweet, but yes, it is. Oh, watch this. I'll get a knife from the kitchen. He passed by her. I can't even get a cut. I'll show you. Rob, don't. I don't want to see that. Come on, it's cool. I want to show you. He passed by the kitten on his way. Rosemary hissed at him from her spot on the floor and stood her ground. He looked at her and his posture sank. Sue looked at him and the kitten whose fur was all fluffed up. Rob, who had become so big and powerful and dangerous, had been defeated in the moment by such a tiny furball. Sue saw how little Rosemary had managed to destroy him in an instant. She felt so bad for him all of a sudden. She walked over to Rosemary and scooped her up in her arms, but she did not want to be picked up. She squirmed out of Sue's arms and ran into the living room and began playing with her string on the floor. See, she said to Rob, she's fine. She'll get used to you. He just looked depressed. So will I. Thank you. He smiled at her, but it did not reach his eyes. She took his hand again and led him to the sofa so they could sit and talk some more. Oh my god, I completely forgot, she said once they were seated. What? he asked with concern. Your mom called. 